Always great talking to my next guest, Energy Charles Johnson. He's going to be back in action against Jimmy Flick. UFC Fight Night, January 14th on short notice. Charles, how are you, man? Doing great, man. How are we doing? Doing great. Where am I getting you today? It looks like it kind of looks like you're at a restaurant, but I, in case it's not, I, I need to confirm. Where are you I'm right a, now? <laughs> Let me show you, man. I, I'm at this sushi restaurant. Oh man. my goodness! Look at this. Yeah, man. You're living Got large. I love it. Edamame. Got me some edamame and some uh, some little nigiri here. So excited about that. Get that, dig in in a little bit. <laughs> I was gonna say get those carbs in now before uh, before you have to cut weight. That's uh, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, man. When did you find out about this fight? Obviously, it was supposed to be Molina and Jimmy Flick, and uh, you stepped up to the plate and you got the matchup. Tell me how this all came together. Um, just like two weeks ago, I think. Um, I was just staying on the grind of finding on these social media and media websites and people's uh, posting about things. So we all were very aware of what's going on with the betting and James Prowse. So uh, UFC, I already said, their fighters were gonna um if they didn't do certain things they wouldn't be able to fight so um was looking at that matchup um i was actually trying to fight on december 10th um see i uh the 135er his uh opponent had fell out so i tried to get on that fight card and then um uh, one of the 125ers actually fell out for the december 10th but that was like a day before and i was in vegas so had they known ahead of time i think i could have got on that card but Regardless, um, this fight showed itself. And, uh, you know, I just put a friendly ask out there on social media. Thank you. I just put a friendly ask out there on uh, social media and, and mentioned Jimmy. And uh, it was like, yeah, man, I would love I would love the opportunity to fight you as well, man. So uh, it all came together rather fast once the opportunity presented itself um, because Jimmy isn't afraid to fight anyone. And I'm not afraid to fight anyone. We, we both um work hard so it was pretty good did, did it make things easier just being familiar with the opponent i'm sure you knew about him because you buy you both fought in lfa right so i'm assuming you you at least had heard of him or are familiar with him as an opponent right yeah i was very very fam not familiar as far as like training or anything but familiar mm -hmm. with him as far as about 2018 right before i went to tiger muay thai in 2019 um i uh we were almost got matched together um and then I went to Tiger Muay Thai, and then he went to the LFA, had a couple fights, I think, fought for the belt, and then um, won the belt, and then got called up in 2020, had the one fight and retired. So uh, I've been aware of him since about 2019-ish. Nice. And uh, I knew he had retired. I didn't know that he was coming back until I seen that fight book. Um, like I said, I was looking around, trying to see upcoming flyweight fights. I was like, oh, Jimmy's fighting again. That's cool. First Molina, that'd be a good fight, you know, and then just keeping my eyes out there. So Yeah, it all worked out, man. That's great. Um, so now that you've had a chance to kind of, you know, assess him as an opponent, uh, style-wise, how are you looking at this one? Uh, it's a, I mean, we're the fight can go anywhere. It's a great fight for the fans. Both of us are we're very well-rounded. So obviously his specialty is once he grabs you, you're in trouble, you know. So you just got to be mindful of positions and – uh I think it's going to be a great fight. Awesome. You know, um, it's fly, it will fly away, so, you know, anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really exciting matchup on paper. I actually love this fight. And um, the fact that it's short notice, is is there going to be any cross-training this camp, or is it all at home at, at home base for this one? Uh, I'll do a little bit of training in Sweden uh, for about a week here for the holidays. I had already scheduled a trip. It was already booked. Oh, okay. So I'm going to Sweden uh, for about eight, nine days. I'm going to train out there. Um uh, with a team out there, they got a few guys in the UFC, so that'll be fun. And then uh, I'm right back and come back home to my team and finish up the last about 10, 11 days at home. That's awesome. Which team in Sweden do you train with? Is it the All Star Gym or, or different different camp? No, I won't be up. I won't be up. Uh, I won't be in where All Stars is. It's gonna be uh, Redline TC. Um, they kind of, they do everything there, so that'll be. Um, it would be my first time popping in there, but they're open every day and stuff for Christmas. So it's just a place where I can get some work in and with some good people that know what they're doing. Now, when you say you, you'd already booked this trip, was this like, so it was supposed to be like a vacation and now you're doing training or was the plan to always go yeah. down there and do training? Okay. Cause I was wondering like what the connection was to Sweden that, you know, but uh, um, th that makes sense. The connection is my lady lives in Norway and she, oh, that's right. Okay. Sweden. Yeah. So, um, 
we were I'm going to Norway initially and then flying over to Sweden for the holidays and then flying back from Sweden. Okay. Um, for, cool. And I had to cut it short because originally I was going to stay out there till like the around my birthday, January 10th, which is the day I fly out to Vegas now. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, everything works out. I cut the, sh- I, I changed my fly back date and, you know, so it's just, just a little work around little things. Yep. Working, training, working, and figure out training, and just stay consistent. Good man, that's awesome. And obviously, you're eating yeah. some sushi now, but uh, I imagine yeah. uh, the weight cut. When, when, how are you sort of navigating that with all the traveling? Oh, uh, weight will be fine, man. I, I, I don't get over 142, 143, so weight will be fine. Um, I eat clean the majority of the time. I'm gonna meal prep things when I get there. You know, between me and my lady, we're just gonna meal prep and stay consistent, maybe have one good day of eating, maybe Christmas, you know, mm-hmm. as long as I'm not drinking alcohol and I'm w- drinking water, it'll come right off. So, um, I'm doing, this is my like fourth or fifth, three day, three, three a day today. So, um, this stuff just burns right through me, you know? Okay. So like the, the food is, is easy. <laughs> awesome. That's great, man. And, uh, do you know who's going to be making the trip with you as far as your corner? Yeah, same coaches, uh, Justin Hardick, Joaquin Marcialazo, and my jiu-jitsu coach, uh, who I've been training with for a while. His name is Brendan. Um, he's, he's, he's phenomenal at jiu-jitsu, so I'm excited about him having his first experience out there with us. Do you believe in cage rust? Do you think that'll be a factor in this fight? All uh, depends on what he's been doing, man. When I came back uh, after my two-year layoff, my first fight in the LFA, there was no cage rust. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what he's been doing. I know he works his ass off, so um, I don't know. I think he'll show up. I think he'll be fine, man. Uh, honestly, he's got plenty of experience. He trains hard. He's got his mind made up on what he wants to do, and so it's going to be a hell of a fight. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Uh, so how's this fight playing out? How do you see it going down on January 14th? Uh, it's going to be a dog fight, man. It's going to be a dog fight, and uh plan on getting my hand raised. plan on winning the majority of the positions. Plan on winning the majority of the striking and uh, dictating the pace in there. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fully expecting a dog fight with Jimmy. Uh, I know he's very strong-minded. And he's, he's a very, uh, from what I've heard from uh, hearing interviews and hearing people talk about training with him, he's, um, he's very strong, you know. So I'm just excited, man, to get in there, feel him for myself, you know, mm-hmm. fill it out and get into a fight, man, as yeah. always. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's great, man. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you get this win. That'll be back-to-back victories in the UFC. Where does a win put you in the grand scheme of things? Because, again, you had a tough debut that a lot of people, no one wanted to fight him, and you went out there and went the distance with them. Well, um, we'll see. We'll see where it puts me. Uh, I know Jimmy was either on the cusp or, like, rank 15th when he won that first fight or something. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I know people see Jimmy as a very phenomenal and very good uh fighter in the flyweight weight class but it's so many champions in there right now hopefully we get a number next to our name after this one but if we don't um i would love to fight a number a ranked guy um i'm, I'm, I'm itching to get out of this prospect phase the ufc puts you through i'm itching to get into a numbered opponent because i feel like all the ranked guys are very comfortable you know and they're picking and choosing fights so i just want to get in there with some of these ranked guys and you know get to it Honestly, yeah, start pushing towards getting to a belt. We're in the ultimate fighting championship. Uh, the goal is to get to the belt, not fight a million fucking people before you get there. Yeah, no, for sure, man. Uh, and uh, something we were talking about off air, your good buddy Jamal Hill getting that title shot. How cool is that yeah. to see that all come together? Because it, like, even talking to Jamal, it just happened that night that he got the title shot. I mean, he's a, he's a prime example of you stay ready, you stay consistent, you continue doing what you're supposed to do. And in his case specifically, he's getting knockouts. That always raises your stock quickly. Um, and he's getting knock- knockouts over named opponents, like people who everyone knows. So I think it's, 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 uh, it's a great thing, man. Uh, I haven't been out here for two years in Michigan now and getting to meet him, um, crossing paths a couple of times, I think – that uh he's gonna do well for himself and i'm just like what he said i'm sure inspired a lot of people but i really related to it because it's it's that's what i think mm-hmm. he's ready to get in there and see how great he is and and see what happens you know with that with that you know proves to himself you know all he ever wanted to do was see 
how good he was. And that's how I've felt for a very long time. And I've said it in interviews. So when he said that, I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for you. Um, I'm a big fan of Glover since meeting him in 2016 in Branson, Missouri, fighting for the LFA. So, um, you know, if, if, if Glover was fighting anyone else, I would probably be picking Glover. But in this one, I'm just going to be a, a, a straight up fan. And I kind of am pulling for Jamal because, you know, Glover's had the title, you know, and he lost it. So I, I want to I would love to see uh, another another brother go ahead, and get a belt. And uh, it'll be cool to see that. Before we go, I uh, don't want to take up your lunchtime. I know how important sushi is, no, one of my good. favorite meals. But uh, this Patty Pimblett decision, what did you think of that fight? How did you score it? I, don't, I mean, I don't really put any stock into these um, decisions anymore. I was there live. Um, I told my boy, I don't know. I could see them giving it to Jared. I could see them giving it to Patty. Um, I thought that Patty won the first round, and I thought that Patty was – dictating the striking although he was getting hit um he was dictating the striking and pushing jared back most of the fight so you never know when the judges are sitting case side what they're like viewing that as you know um and obviously the third round i felt like jared won because he just held him against the cage and patty allowed that to happen but um you know you never know what these judges are looking at. And the scoring system now, I, like we talked about last time, is so heavily based towards, in my opinion, ju- uh, damage now. And so it looked like Patty was putting out a lot of damage, and maybe that's just what they saw. So yeah. all we can do moving forward is um, try to have a little bit more transparency, right? And I'm like, what do you guys want from us? <clears throat> we know. We see it. We've seen it more than once now. It's damage, you yeah. know? Yeah, so, you're right, man. For yeah. sure. I like the uh, like the honest assessment on that one. Uh, before we go, favorite sushi roll. Do you have a favorite or do you like all of it? Um, so right here they're doing a they do an avocado cashew roll. Ooh, nice. It's pretty clean. It's just like a really clean avocado and um cashew roll. It's been like it's something new for me because I'm into peanuts and stuff like that. So um <clears throat> I like that. I like clean things. So I stay away from the sour cream, but when, when I'm being fat, it's like sour cream, salmon, and whatever. <laughs> yeah, right? I like the one with a little bit of cream cheese in it. I think it's Alaska or Boston yeah. roll. I can't remember, but that that's my favorite for sure because that, that cream cheese with the uh, seaweed is amazing. I love it. Yeah, I think that may be Boston because Alaskan is usually has uh, avocado in it. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I was getting mixed up. I was trying to get my uh, states yeah. figured out or whatever, or my areas. Yeah, and and then you know, figure anything out. that's fried when I'm being fat, anything like I stay away from fried eight times out of 10 when I'm, but when I choose, Hey, I'm going to be fat today. Anything fried with sour cream. Yeah. I'm all for it. <laughs> I that's mean, awesome. usually cream cheese. I'm all for it. <laughs> my nice. favorite role, my favorite nigiri though is mackerel. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is about mackerel, but mackerel has this taste to it. It's just soft. Fire. It's a combo together. It tastes amazing. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's good, man. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Hey, Charles, thanks for doing this. Uh, we're looking forward Most to definitely. it. Uh, UFC fight night, January 14th and safe travels over there to Sweden. Uh, if there's anyone yes, you'd sir. like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. I just like to take the, the time to thank the team over at the UFC performance Institute for, uh, just keeping us all together, you know, and, um, uh, I got off a call with them today, and they just sent me out a package of supplements. I've never used supplements in my life. So uh, in this case, um, I'm excited because I know that it's going to be clean, right? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to the UFCPI, my team, Murcielago, um, and uh, my and Blend Lansing out here, keeping me together for my fight camps.